All right. Well, here we are doing uh, the Florida video because I still don't have a fucking cord. I'm just busy, man. Um, especially now that I'm directing the documentary, like the amount of work that goes into directing something. I mean, every I think about it. It's now now that I'm directing it, I'm not making it like an hour and a half to it. It's, it might be almost three hours long. But it's coming out in August. It's fucking badass. You guys are going to see a cut this week coming up. Um, maybe even this weekend. You know, I know he has like the first five or six minutes, that at least the draft of it done. Um, and, and you guys will get a sense of what the film's going to really be about. And this, uh, this is the Mike, Ver this is a Florida st series. So this is the $10 tier. And I know that lately, I, I mean... I haven't been doing as much content as as I would even like to be doing. Um, it's just I had the anti heroes, and then um, you know I've been I've been doing a lot of painting, really just because you know my mom was sick and and I just needed some meditative quiet. And uh, you know as 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 funny as the videos can be. It's not exactly something that I always feel good about talking about. Like, let me give you something in particular. Recently, we were talking about the story when I was at Santa Barbara County Jail and I got smashed and I had broken ribs and <clears throat> I was kicking Suboxone and I was really sick and, and I was boofing probably rat shit or whatever it was. Well, that was really good. Thanks, babe. Uh, I just got this hat, and I don't know. The suicidal underneath it is kind of tripping me out. I think I'm going to go backwards. Wait. All right. That, then there's, like, not the suicidal. It's not as distracting. But So that story in particular, like, even though it's funny, it's painful. You know, um, my whole third prison term was just a painful experience for me. <clears throat> it may not seem that way because I make jokes about it, but every time that I'm telling it, you know, I hear people say a lot when, when they hear stories that I do, that I kind of transport them to it and you kind of are there for a little bit sometimes. I mean, it depends, you know, I know sometimes I go off on rants and stuff. Really the Florida story, this story in particular, the Mike Virgin thing, it's, you know, um, it, it, it's a story that I've perfected over the years because I've told it so many times. So there's less like characters than say like the prison stories. It's the part of the reason I do characters is just to give you a sense of like what kind of people I was around and everything. Cause they're, they, they can be some interesting people. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, when I'm telling this shit, it's already painful. It may not seem that way, but it, it can be like, some of it can be, it can just, you know, invoke a time in my life where I was really suffering a lot. And then, you know, my mom was sick. She's doing a lot better now, but it was looking kind of bad there for a second. And I mean, I'm just kind of mentally preparing that it's probably, it's already been the beginning of the end with her for a couple years now. And it's the kind of thing where it can just get really bad out of nowhere. And I'm kind of mentally preparing for that. Now I'm microdosing and doing all that other stuff. So, um, I just had a paint and, and then the documentary is painful too, because I'm having to go through all the old footage of me, like throughout my life. So I'm actually having to watch it. Some of it, like I watched myself in high school and it's like cringeworthy shit. I'm like, yeah, bro, I am so faded right now. You're so chill. You know, I talk like that. I'm like, oh, God, how embarrassing. And then there's footage of me as a baby. And, and that's never easy for me to watch because it's like a, you know, it's a, um, it's almost like a promise that was broken. You know, there's like this innocent kid, which is me. I put my parents through way, way, way more pain and suffering than I needed to. So... I apologize for the lack of content, and I also apologize for the five-minute introduction trying to make excuses for why I haven't been doing as much content. This weekend, 
I'm making it a point to just focus on content. I'm, I want to flood the fucking channel. I want to do a live this weekend. And China story will go up. Mo new monologues. You guys seem to like that. And uh, let's get into the Florida story. Thank you very much. I'm still not used to this hat. I don't know. And there's like gray hairs popping up. Uh, that didn't help. That didn't make anything fucking better, man. All right. That is really good. So, I mean, I don't even remember where we were last time in the Florida story. I want to say that the girl that I'd left rehab with had just overdosed. And, and obviously, I was on heroin when it happened. I had just relapsed. And it was definitely a traumatic experience. You know, seeing the blood come out of her nose like that and kind of get diluted and swirl into the drain, the way she looked kind of like a porcelain doll. I described it in Wasting Talent. Um, and sorry, guys, I'm just going to read this section from it really quick. Um, hold on. Oh, my God. And I, I dropped my coffee. That fucking checks out. Jesus Christ. What a mess. Yeah, now you see why I'm so fucking disordered. Oh, my God. Now there's coffee and Carino coming here. And she's like, what are you doing? Have you been butt fucking again? You're a piece of shit. All right. So listen to this. This is the part in Wasting Talent where the overdose occurs. Now, the reason I'm going to read this little section is because I really I really put some time into it, you know, and I put some thought into it to explain what it was like when this happened, because this is based off this particular part of the Florida series. Um, all right, hold on. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. You guys are like, God, do you really have to do that? Can you just get into the story? Okay. All right. So, let's see. Blair and Felony come through the front door. I put my hand on Blair's shoulder, but she shrugs me off. Don't. Come on, baby. I say, don't be like that, please. You notice how I look in the camera and I do what a fucking weirdo. God. Um... Come on, baby, I say, don't be like that, please. No, do not touch me. It's over. You're an asshole. Booze, I say. I drank way too much earlier. You're a liar, and you're never going to change. How could I have been so fucking stupid to think that you actually could? I love you, I say. You don't love me, she screams. You love drugs. She ain't lying. I do. I do love drugs. I mean, this isn't me. This is Damien. Although I call her baby and repeat that I love her, I'm... Handing Alex the Nestle dope behind my back. Blair's crying. And you think I don't know when you get, you're getting high? And you run off and you score fucking quaaludes in San Francisco? What is up with the quaaludes thing, I say? I never did any quaaludes, okay? When I try to hug her, she wiggles away. I kill my beer and burp. And who said you could start drinking again? I thought no more drinking or dope. We've been through this, Blair. I have to taper down. I quit doing heroin and everything else is just going to have to come with time. I can't do it all at once. That's unrealistic. Please just give me a break. I'm really trying here. Blair hugs me. I know. You were just really messed up and it scared me. I was scared. I drank like a whole bottle, I say. I'm sorry. Just look me in the eyes and tell me that I'm more important to you than getting high. Baby, you were the most important thing in my life. I had a slip up today, but I swear from this point forward. Then there's screaming from the bathroom. I run to it and the door's locked. Unlock the door. Felony is barking from inside. Angie is listless and Levi blue on the floor. She has a spike stuck crooked in her arm. She went out instantly, Alex cries. God, fuck. It's an interesting piece of dialogue. You know, I had to actually make that decision when I was writing this. I was like, you know, I should write God and then fuck. <laughs> That's good writing. I dive down and I rip the needle out, making blood roll thinly down the elbow. Is she going to die? Alex asks. No, because we're going to save her. We need ice, though. The blue is taking on a glowing shade of white. Blair is kneeling beside her and crying out. Look at her lips, she says. They're so purple. When I try to give her CPR, her breath smells of Budweiser. Her nose is cold and her eyes look like butterscotch. 
I listen for breathing, but there is no response. Alex comes in with a champagne bucket full of ice. He dumps it on the floor and they, spar they sprawl around her body. I'm telling Alex to run the fucking shower, but he's in a state of shock paralysis. Come on, I scream. We're going to save her, man. Run the shower. I rip her pajama bottoms off. Probably inappropriate to make light of this. Her yellow panties come off next. I put her ankles atop my shoulders, inserting ice cubes into her asshole one at a time. I can actually feel her face getting colder against mine. Angie! Her body is then dragged into the shower. I'm slapping her face, saying her name. Get out of the fucking way, Alex screams. He slaps her a few times before hitting her closed fist. This is in a desperate fury and makes a crunching sound. You broke her nose, I say, holding his arms back. Blood cascades down her chin, diluted by the water. Alex runs to the toilet and vomits. Ange cries, oh my god, Angelique. I'd run out of home remedies. Nothing was working, so I signaled for Blair to take Alex. I'm all alone with Angie and I'm shivering from the shower. I surrender on top of her naked body. I look at the digital clock on the motel coffee machine. This is for the purpose of permanent record. It, ju it just blinks 12 a.m. over and over because no one ever bothered to program it. In the middle of the night when Angelia Renee Myers died, the body would be an issue soon. Before anything else, I had to do a shot. It's only, if only to deal with the hysteria of my friends. The Nestle dope had fallen out of the baggie. It was now scattered in the tile crevices of the sink. I round up enough pebbles for a shot and have no needles. Needless to say, it would be in bad taste to grab them out of the other room. Under these grim circumstances, I don't hesitate to use the needle that was in Angie. As I grab the rig off the bathroom floor, I notice a puffy red new tattoo on the girl. It is embroidered above her crotch, sketched heart with an arrow run through, and very romantic script it promises Alex forever. And that is a work of literary genius. Should have done the pocket butthole. Come on, do the pocket butthole. Do the... No. Not a musician. I think I'll ever go to readings and people be like, Go on, man, do the pocket butthole. I'll be like, all right, all right. One more. One more reading. Yeah, but it's not like a concert where chicks are like showing their tits. It's just like a bunch of fucking chomos. They're like... Very sexual. Very enlightening. All right, Sarah, I will, will timestamp it and say that the video starts at 12.30. Okay, so the only reason I read that is to explain that was a painful part of my life that I tried to process through writing. And after she had overdosed, we were all kind of in a state of disarray, you know, emotional disarray. Didn't really even know how to form a thought because it's traumatic. I mean, you see somebody die like that and um, it sticks with you because... I don't know. I mean, have you ever like been in a creek and you found like a dead possum or like a dead rabbit and it's just like sitting there like all snarled and it stinks of death and you just look at it and there's this really, I don't know. It's like there's the very ugly energy emanating from a dead animal. It's very similar with a person, but it's even more serious. Obviously the stakes are higher because it's a human being and you're kind of looking at that person and you know that it's permanent. To complicate matters, you know, there was also the criminality side of it, you know. Um, in Florida, it's a, it's a conservative state, you know, this is Jed Bush territory at the time. And if something like that happens and you call the police, you're going to prison for manslaughter. You're probably going to get like 15 to 20 years. Yeah. You're going to get more time than most rapists or pedophiles for calling the police and saying, hey, my friend accidentally um, overdosed. They'll be like, it's your fault, Chunky. So we had to dump the body, which we went through in the last video. And then Mike Verge, or then TJ and, and this dirtbag dude that he was with dropped us off at a Best Western. Now, mind you, this is probably, I don't know, 10, 11, midnight, something like that, middle of the night. <sighs> Megan and I don't have a dollar to our name. We don't know what, to, what we're going to do. Now, I know the stories are spread out and we're trying, I'm trying to get the Megan video up. Um, I didn't realize that it was a big deal um, to have her tell the same story because I've already done it. One person tells something, it's creative license. If two people tell the same story and there's too many consistencies, that's a fucking case. So just so you know, like 
it's it's kind of a big deal and you know there has to be legal counsel and there has to be an nda and it's it's pretty hardcore um to think about because this this really is is a case not just with her you guys know what happens in the rest of the story but uh we'll get to that but so megan and i we don't have any money we're resourceless and we're at this best western in west palm beach florida i don't even think we had ids on us we may have and she goes, what are we going to do? Now, she had said, she had, what I was getting to before my ADD took a hold is she had told me that she was married to this guy. He was an Iraq war vet and they divorced, but she got to keep the house and she had this whole big property in Knoxville, Tennessee, that if we just get to, we're going to create a life together and we'll live out there and I'll have my own house. So I was like, man, that's a good deal. She's a couple years older than me. It just seemed like a good thing. And of course, I thought I was in love because you always fall under that spell when you're in rehab. We've talked about that. Two dead batteries don't start a car. You just, you're, you're so empty and you're looking for validation anywhere that you can that when a girl's just like, you're good looking, you're like, I'm in love. Fuck my recovery. Let's get an apartment. And then it's inevitable that you'll relapse. And, and I mean, that that's probably killed a myriad of people you know, myriad people out there. Um, just this, this whole thing about leaving rehabs with people that you think you're in love with. Somebody told me once that it's a piece of shit with a gold plate on it and you don't realize that they stink. You don't realize how stinky that shit is. So you hang out with them for about two or three days and then you're like, Oh my God, this person's a straight whore. So what are we going to do? Okay, our plan is to get back to Knoxville, Tennessee. But I mean, the immediate concern is where we're going to sleep that night. We don't know where we're going to sleep that night. And I do what I've done in most situations in my life, especially back then I was 20 years old. I called my my dad, collect. So you could call 1-800-COLLECT. Remember he does it in Big Daddy, 1-800-COLLECT. And they're like, you have a collect call from, it's your baby boy. I would always do that with my dad. So... You know, and it's not always funny because a lot of times I'd be like in a county jail or some lockup somewhere or, you know, just a walled from rehab, which is what I had done in this instance. It's the middle of the night. There's a time zone difference. My dad knew that if I was calling him collected this time of night, that I'd a walled from rehab. So I call him collect. It's your baby boy. And he picks up and he's like, Ryan. I'm like, yeah, dad. He's like, where are you? Why are you calling me? Why are you not in fucking treatment? Dad, I want you to listen to me for a second. I want you to listen to me. I've met a woman. Her name's Megan. Megan Taylor Thomas. She sounds like the she's related to the home improvement family, right? And I'm in love, Dad. Straight the fuck up, I'm in love. I am in love. I am in love. I'm going to have babies. He's like, oh my God, you're not in rehab. I go, no, I'm not in rehab. I left because of love, man. Because of love. Huh. I love you, dad. He just starts screaming at me. He's like, you fucking delinquent. We've spent your college education on these rehab and you're a selfish piece of shit. And you always are going around with these, you know, what do you call them? I don't know, some old school ass word for a whore. Uh, God, man, I wish I could, it was like a B-42 or something. Some like straight World War II fucking slut slang word. Colloquial from the Second World War. You're with these B-52 sluts. You know, he meant hood rats, but I'm like, I'm like, father, you don't understand. I love her. And he's like, well, I don't care, Ryan. I don't care. And by this point, he was in Al-Anon and Al-Anon was telling him, you're enabling him. Every time you send him money, you're enabling him. Stop giving him money. It's like, I'm not giving you anything. I'm not doing it. And Megan's like, hey, um, can I talk to him? And I was like, I was like, hey, my fiance wants to talk to you. He's like, your fiance. I'm like, she gets on the phone. She's like, hi, Mr. Leone. Hi, this is Megan Taylor Thomas. Uh, Megan, the tool man, Taylor. And so she like just starts kind of, you know, sweet talking him. In the southern draw, my dad went to Vanderbilt, so I think 
probably had like orgies with southern women so he has this like affinity for them this penchant for a southern draw and she's like i'm gonna take care of your boy he's so sweet to me some guys in the the rehab they were bullying me and we had to get out of there now listen mr leone i'm like it's leone she's like mr leone i'm only an alcoholic and uh I swear there's going to be none of that drug use stuff, not on my watch. No, sir. I love your son very much. And if you could just get us a hotel room for a week, I have a home back in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'd be more than happy to let Ryan come live with me. I love him. And I'm just kind of like standing to the side of the phone. I'm like, what's he saying? What's he saying? She hangs up. She's like, yep, he got us a hotel room for a week at the Best Western. I'm like, what the fuck? Really? All right, cool. So what what you had to do in a situation like that, because I don't even think we had an ID, you know, um, but I had to do this kind of thing so many times. What my dad had to do is like he had a fax. This is back when they had fax machines. This is back in like 06, 07. Oh, man, that coffee is really good. You know, I spilled a bunch of it. Oh, well. Um, what would happen is my dad would get the ID, he'd fax it, and then he would do like an authorization form and he paid for it for a week. And this was, you know, best Westerns aren't the best hotels in the world or motel. Well, it's not a motel, it's a hotel, but it's very cheap. It's like, I don't know, 70 bucks a night, hundred bucks a night. I mean, it's pretty low end for a hotel, you know, motels are usually cheap, 30 to 120 bucks. Hotels are usually like 150 to like 700 a night. You know, and this is like probably like the most bootleg Best Western you could stay at. They had continental breakfast, but it was like peanut butter fucking Captain Crunch. Nobody likes that. I'm like, what the fuck? Where's the berry shit? What is this? The fuck is you put peanut butter Captain Crunch because you know no one's going to fucking eat it, you pieces of shit. Fuck you. They did not like me. They did not like me one bit. I always talk shit about the continental breakfast, you know? They always have these, like, honey buns and, like, these, like, bear claws that are, like, seriously, like, nine years old, you know? There's, like, the, like Simpson sweepstakes on it from, like, 94. You're like, dude, there's no way that this is not expired. This is, like, there's, like, a sweep, a Simpson sweepstake from, like, the 90s. It's like, shut up! You don't want your continental breakfast? You ain't gonna get a continental lunch or dinner? Fucking spoiled-ass hotel person. I'm like... Always some weird ass people at Best Western. I mean, they really take their, you know, you go up to them, you go up to the manager, right? They're probably making like 14 bucks an hour. And look, hey, <laughs> I've eaten out of dumpsters in my life. Like I'm not above 14 bucks an hour, but you go up to them and they're always on some bullshit. Like, well, yes. Hi, my name's uh, Andy and I'm the concierge here. The concierge at the fucking Best Western? What are you going to do? Tell me where to go score dope. Like, I, what, what, a concierge at the Best Western? What the fuck are you talking about? That's ridiculous. It's a glorified motel. <sighs> so anyway, so we end up getting in there eventually. And what I'm telling you is that I'm not just saying all this to be funny. I like really did have an issue with them with the Continental Breakfast. They didn't like me from the get-go because back then, I mean, you know how I am now. I'm still kind of like an arrogant asshole. But like back then, I was really bad. Like, and I had like acne and I was still like... <sighs> Do you know who I am? They'd be like, why Why are you doing that with your face? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, no, I, I was just a dick back then. So anyway, so we get into this hotel and I don't know if I ever told you guys about this girl, Alexis, when I was out there, but there's this stripper girl named Alexis. She was the one, remember, I had sex with her in the pool. We got caught. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Can't, you know, got to finesse, you know, no need to start unnecessary conflict. Okay, so Alexis, one of the times that I'd AWOLD, I don't know, one of the many, 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 many times that I'd AWOLD, um, while I was, yeah, I'm going to go smoke a cigarette. I was going to do it inside, but I got to be respectful. Nico's in here. That's not cool. Look at my, like, dirty ass. Oh, it's like there's some paintings and stuff. So, mm hmm Look, we've got more paintings right here. One of the bigger paintings. Then we got that guy. Yeah. And we go through here. 
So poop in the toilet, always a good sign. And then we are out, out to this shit. Yeah, it's not too bad, it's a pretty nice little setup. Not too bad for a, uh, for a bitch. Hmm. When you really need a cigarette, they're just so much more gratifying. All right, so anyway, um, when I was hanging out with Alexis, she was married to this guy. Or not married. I think it was just her boyfriend. They may, I think they were married, actually. So she, she was married to this guy who's like this Asian dude, super clean cut, straight up criminal, right? And what they would do is they would teach me how to run scams. There are all these scams in, um, in, in, like in Florida that you could do. What's going on right here? You're using. You have zits. You're using. I don't know. Okay. I'm gonna sit on the toilet. I'm gonna take a shit too. Is that cool? I feel like we know each other like that. I'm not gonna take a shit. So they taught me all these scams. And like the main one that they taught me was how to boost in Florida, right? And pretty sure that I've explained this before. But what we would do is we would go into a super Walmart or a Walmart. And we would go into the clothes section. We'd steal girls panties bras sometimes i'd wear like five or six levi's we'd boost we'd boost clothes then we would go to a super walmart we would go return all of it you just go to customer service you return i'm not telling anyone to do this i'm just saying what i did strictly a science experiment that didn't go well right but then you go to super walmart and you'd return all the boosted items and they'd give you a gift card now these gift cards were 50 cents on the dollar so say you get like i don't know um, say you steal like $300 worth of shit. You go to super Walmart, they give you the gift card. So they give you the gift card in its entirety. It's like you get the $300 gift card. Then you take it to a pawn shop. This is how scandalous it is in Florida. In LA, it's even worse. There's like kiosks where you can bring your gift cards and they'll give you 50 cents on the dollar. So if you have $300, they'll give you $150, um, like prepaid debit card that you can spend money on. You can get, you can take cash out of it. You get a pin number. So what we would do right when, right when we got to the hotel the next day, of course, I mean, we just experienced the death of one of both of our friends. I mean, we saw her die like right in our arms next day. We, and we actually, I, I took a cab to, to Walmart. I didn't have any money either. I took a cab and, and, I was like, hey, man, I just got to go shopping. I'll pay you when I'm done. He's like, okay. I literally go in there and boost like $500 worth of shit. I come back and I'm like, I'm like, oh, um, yeah. You know what, man? I don't have my wallet on me. Can you take me to the super Walmart so I can go get this gift card? He's like, oh, man, come on, man. You know how they are. You know, a cab driver. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. I'm like, well, I mean, do you want to get paid or what? So he ends up taking me to the super Walmart and you know because i was like hey man i'm the manager of the super walmart you just gotta take me there i'm gonna get money i can get it out of the register we're good i go to super walmart i get like i don't remember it was like 240 bucks or something you know after i had redeemed it because there was a pawn shop literally right next door to the super walmart it's like made to boost and i went and i paid the cab guy i gave him like an extra 10 bucks or something he's like and a thirsty cab driver i like he's all like an asshole to me and then i was like hey man here's an extra 10 bucks for waiting so long he's like oh brother hey man anytime you need a ride man i'm your cab driver okay and you're like you fucking scumbag you're telling shit to me the whole time until i tipped you that 10 bucks you thirsty piece of shit so now i have money right now this is the problem Okay, I'd been getting China White from DJ for a long time. But if you remember in the beginning of the Florida series, when I first started scoring heroin in Florida, I was getting those caps. It's like these brown powder caps. And they were, it was, it's like the worst heroin I've ever done in my life. They should be ashamed of themselves. Like the heroin that's like available commercially, like on the street in Florida, at least back in like 06, 07, was absolute garbage. It's the worst heroin ever. Like it was nothing like Boston. It wasn't like Detroit. It wasn't like Baltimore. It wasn't like LA, San Francisco. San Francisco got some shitty dope too, really. But um, the stuff that they, that you could buy there was shitty. And remember, it was like there were periods there where I would go to 
sober living houses and the only thing that I could get was weed. Shitty weed at that. Like shit with stems and seeds. Shit that like rappers make fun of in songs in like the 90s. Felt like I was in like some Cypress Hill song. What's up with this red rash? I shave my chest hair too. That's that's tacky. Looks like um, looks like some seventies porn star shit. You smoke gay. <laughs> Shut up. All right, I'm back. It's kind of cool with the phone, huh? You can like, you can like kind of go do stuff. Okay, I'm gonna plug my phone. You guys are probably like, what the fuck? This is your extra story. This is a bullshit story. Sorry. So now I'm having the trouble where I can't find heroin. I mean, I can't find it anywhere. So what I do is I end up getting some crack the first night. Now I go into some neighborhood and, and that's very common when you're trying to score drugs. You know, you'll, you'll be looking for, I'm going to change my hat again. Sorry. It was hot. No hat. No hat. It's too hot for a hat. So it's very common that you feel like a completely different person without that. Now I'm like free. Now I'm going to be funny. I'm like, Duh. And then I went, I just saw a bunch of Eskimo guys butt fucking on an ice ring without ice skates on. And they were like butt fucking and slitting. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So anyway, so one of the problems when you score drugs in the ghetto is a lot of times you'll go somewhere, especially like in Florida. Florida's weird, but it's like a it's like a crackhead spot, right? You'll go and when you go try to score, all they have is crack. Oh, no, I don't I don't got no hair on. No, I got I got the crack cocaine. Though. Oh, this is a good crack. Though. This is that Richard Pryor shit. Oh, this is that shit, boy. And you're like, oh, all right. Well, <laughs> I've never said no to crack happened before and I'm not going to start now. Let me go ahead and get that. So I went and I boosted, right? And you know, Megan was all excited that I was going to get us a bunch of opiates because supposedly she was an Oxycontin addict. I'd find out later that's not true. You know, fucking dope whore, right? I come back with crack and I have a straight shooter and you know, and I'm weird when I smoke crack. I come back and I'm just like, I'm like, hey, uh, and I start lying. I'm like, yeah, dude, I met this Chinese dude. She's got Afghan heroin that you have to break down with le lemon juice and we're going to have it soon. But for now, let's just smoke rocks. And Megan was like, what the fuck? You're such a scumbag. And I'm just <sighs> smoking crack, watching celebrity rehab. So that was the first day, right? Crack binge, the end of it. I have to go to the store, have my fake ID, get alcohol. And, um, and I drink myself into oblivion. Next day, and I really did keep that cab driver's number. Next, so this is day two, right? So the first day, I smoke. I just grab crack, and Megan didn't even smoke it with me. She's like, "Eh, that's fucking gross." I'm like, "Okay, whatever." I'm like, "I'm just gonna smoke it then." Hey, do you want to suck my dick and let me blow out a crack it while I'm coming? She's like, "Okay." I'm like, "Oh, no. oh yeah, oh yeah, baby, feels good, baby." Oh, oh, oh. So the next day I wake up, I'm determined to get heroin. And I call TJ. Of course, he's not picking my calls up. You know, I'm, I'm like, hey, man, what's up? He's like, oh, uh, hey, who, who's this? I go, it's Ryan. Click. I'm like, oh, man, fucking pussy. You know, because he's probably petrified that he was going to catch a case over the body, right? So the next day I end up taking, where, where do I take a cab to? I don't remember, but it was like, I think it was Miami. I think I went to Miami the next day. So like the next day I had to hustle up more money. I went and boosted. Same shit. Call the cab driver. Go to Walmart. Same Walmart people. I'm like, hey, how you doing, Rachel? She's like, oh, hey, hey, Sally. She's like, Ryan, what up? I'm like, yeah. Walking out like $500 for the boosted shit again. Then I go to Super Walmart. Then I go to the pawn shop. Now I have money. So then I believe I took the cab to... Miami, I want to say. Let's just say for the purpose of this. It doesn't matter. Wherever I went, I went somewhere where I was able to get heroin. Finally, I met some Haitian dude. He's like, oh, yo, dude. Uh. No, that's that's <laughs> that's New York. Uh, 
how do Haitian guys talk? I don't know. But I met this, 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 you know, this Haitian guy. He's like, I sell the boy. I sell it the boy. I was like, oh, really? All right. He's like, yeah, duh, I got this a boy, y'all. And he like shows me, you know, these caps, the, the pill capsules that I was talking about. So now I have heroin. So I go back to um, where we're staying in West Palm Beach at the Best Western. And, and of course, Megan's like, oh, yay, I love you. And she's all mad the night before. Well, you know, we're mad and I'm not just like my dick while I smoke crack. Where are you? Where are you? Fucking on to you. Should have known. Should have been a red flag. She's like, no, I don't want to do that. Will you suck my dick? Will I do it? Okay. That sounds fun. <laughs> so now I come back and we just start binging out on heroin. I mean, I'm talking binging, right? Now, my dad is so weird. He is so, he's been like this forever. I get in trouble and you would think that you know, because I'm in trouble, my dad doesn't want to look out for me anymore. Hold on. I got to get some pineapple juice to make my cum sweet. I swear. Karina's like, your cum tastes chemically. Every time I suck your dick, I feel like I'm sucking on some meth pipe or something. You're fucking gross. You're drug addict. And so she like got me pineapple. For, for Father's Day, she got me some Patagonia shorts, which are very short. I like them. She got me a buy the ticket, take the ride hat, which was, or shirt, which was cool. She got me socks. Now we're getting into the, those like hygiene gifts where she gets me socks and she also gets me, she stocks her refrigerator up with like pineapple juice concentrate. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I see what's going on here. You're giving me socks and you're giving me pineapple juice because my cum tastes like shit. My feet stink. She said, that's right. I was like, hmm. So now I'm on this pineapple juice diet to make my cum taste better. <sighs> I've never tasted cum, not mine or anyone's else. Um, I'd imagine, though, that it doesn't taste good. It wouldn't be my first choice. Like, Dude, I'm starving. Let's get some sushi. Nah, bro, I want cum. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. Let's do, let's do that. Ah, oh, dude, I can literally feel my cum tasting better. Have you ever seen the movie Fantasia? Where it's like the Disney psychedelic orchestra. I feel like my body feels like that right now. Like it's like a Fantasia factory of cum taste. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm, I'm on edibles again. It's Friday. Why not? Okay, so, so now he, so, oh, so my dad, my dad being weird, he sends me a new R Motorola Razor phone. You guys remember those? They were like these black flip phones, and they were, they were like the shit. And there was like a bowling game on it, and I remember everyone was just like, dude, the new Razor's badass. I'm like, why? It's got a bowling game. And everyone was like, that is badass. It's totally worth 900 bucks. Let's do this. And it, like the only thing on it was that it had like a kind of decent, it's a flip phone for all you youngsters there out there. And it had a good camera. It had good picture quality. It was in color. It wasn't no bullshit Nokia, like some black snake that like checkers across the screen. It was a decent phone. And he got it for me after I'd AWOLed from rehab. He's always does that. He'll be like, he'll be like, he's like, you know, in his mind, he's like, if I'm nice to him, maybe he'll stop smoking rocks. And I'm like... Now I'm that like that, you know, now I feel very bad, everything that I put them through, but then I can give a fuck, you know, I just got the razor, and I was like, oh, that's cool, all right, so I have the razor phone, and, you know, we started calling people from the treatment center, from the phone, now, we're stupid, I'm in my early 20s, and we're like, telling them that Allison, is that the name that I gave her? Was it Allison? I know what her real name was. I think we call her Allison. And we, we, we go, we, you know, we're telling people from rehab that Allison had died. And we told them what happened. So one guy in particular was one of our friends. Um, his name was Johnny, I think. 
No. Trent. His name was Trent. So we had this friend named Trent back at rehab. So when we got the phone, he started calling us a bunch. So our whole thing is we'd order pizza, we'd smoke cigarettes, we'd talk aggressively, sometimes anal. We'd shower, hold her upside down, 69 in the shower, and all that stuff. <laughs> all the classics, right? And we're just kind of like living that hotel. We're, we're inhabiting the motel life, which if you're a drug addict, everybody's done that. Hole up in a hotel, sex, drugs, and cable. You know, usually, you know, bullshit, mindless television like Jersey Shore, or, you know, Celebrity Rehab or Nancy Grace being like, oh my God, yeah, yeah. And you're just like, ugh, I hate that bitch. I don't even watch TV anymore. I haven't for a very, very long time. But um, that's kind of what we're doing. We're just, our whole room's just gross. There's like fun dip wrappers everywhere. There's there's pizza. And we have this Razor phone and this guy Trent calls us and he starts talking to us. And what he had told us is that his wife, he'd been married for like 10 years. He's one of those guys that would always be like, dude, look at my wife. She's bad, dog. And like, you'd see pictures of her and you'd be like, you didn't know if it was one of those things where it was ironic, you know, because it looked like a rhinoceros and like ninja samurai steel. If you know what I'm talking about, like that's what kind of look she had. No, she was like some Hawaiian woman. She had a rhinoceros look, though. Like my my bitch is a fucking a bad, huh, boy? Bad. And like, you know, he'd have like some Polaroid and, and everyone be like, yeah, 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 she is bad. I don't even know why you use drugs, dude. If I had a chick like that, I wouldn't use nothing. Love you, dog. So what happened is when he went to rehab, he was in rehab for heroin. She starts cheating on him. Right? She starts cheating on him because I guess... I don't, I don't really remember the situation, but it was like something to the effect where she was cheating on him. She told him. He's like, I don't believe you. So this bitch sends... Pictures of herself getting fucked. Yeah, the rhino getting served with like a pink flamingo, like, you know, mini skirt on. Just has her ass up in the air and she's just getting pounded by like some other fucking, you know, zoo fucking animal, like a, like a giraffe or something. Some like weird looking guy with like a long neck and he's just ball slapping against the rhino ass, right? So he calls us and he's like... <sighs> The rhino cheated on me, and I'm just like, oh, well, that checks out. You know, this is like, this guy lived for his wife, you know? I mean, it's like one of those guys that listen to, like, Panic at the Disco. You know, he, like, he like wore Panic at the Disco shirts, which is cool. It's, I mean, it's, you know, can't help what you like. Can't help if you're a bitch. Can't help if you get cheated on. You know, I remember going to this talk show one time. I think it was, what are those guys, the doctors, right? I went to the doctors for like a, uh, I went for a filming of the doctors and this, this pretty good looking brunette chick was one of the guests and she was like a British chick. And she's like, well, you know, I think that if somebody cheats on you, it's your fault because you're not pleasing them sexually. And I was like, fuck Yeah. And, like, I was with my ex at the time, and she was like, she's like, oh, my God, you're such a... I was the only one that clapped. I was like, oh, yeah, 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 slut, gross. But it's true to some degree. If you get cheated on, it's usually because you did something wrong. Or the person you're with is just a whore. Or if it's a guy, it's just a guy. <laughs> you know? Um, I, I mean, I don't cheat on Karina. You know, if I got on meth, I might, you know, do a little porno or you know, some stuff like that, but I don't stick my dick in stuff. No, I don't do that. No, 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 no. I don't do that. She wrote with me on a prison term. I wouldn't do that. I love her. She's the mother of my child. But this guy got cheated on. And he calls me. He's like, oh my God, the rhino cheated on me. I got to relapse on heroin. Can I come over to your hotel now? I was like, nah, dude. I'm looking at, I'm looking at Megan. She's like spread eagle on the hotel and she's like hey babe come on i want to try the anal beads i'm like look bro i gotta go hang up go fucking 
keeps calling and calling and calling, blows us up. So anyway, calls, he's like, oh, I got 50 bucks. I was like, well, why didn't you say anything sooner? Come on over. Give him the address. He AWOLs, takes a cab over, right? Gives me 50 bucks. And it was the kind of thing where I gave him like a bag I got for 10 bucks. I charged him 50 for it because I'm such a good dude. Oh, it's because I'm such a junkie. That's why. And we get a repeat of what happened the first fucking time. Right? Back, remember I told you that in, in one of the earlier Florida videos, what? A little hair right there. Remember I told you about how um, when Kelly and I were fighting on the phone, I was like, uh, I have no reason to live. And I just like poured the whole thing into a spoon and just got super sloppy and before that, even TJ and the weirdo that he was boning was watching The Simpsons confiscated the dope for me, right? Jeez, Nico's really upset. Now, this guy comes over, and he's like, where's the drugs? And we only had, like, a couple needles. One was hers, and one was mine. I was like, look, man, Trent, I got hepatitis C. I'm just going to keep it one hundo with you, man. If you use my needle, there's a good chance you might ha get hip sizzle too. And it's a fucked up disease. You don't get painkillers or anything. It actually doesn't really do anything. Except for when it does and then you like die because your liver swells up like a fucking watermelon. But that's neither here nor there. He's like, well, let me use Megan's then. Uh, and I was like, nah, you're not sharing with my chick, dude. Nah, you can, if you want to share, you can use mine. We have complimentary shampoo in the bathroom that we can wash it out with. He's like, fine. So we wash this, uh, we wash this needle out. And he starts being a fucking, he starts being a pig. He starts being a pig about it. Doing these insanely big shots. Like wanting to die. Like, well, the rhino cheated on me. I don't even care. So I'm like, hey, man. Allison just died in front of us. Can you kick back a little bit, please? It's like, yeah, I got to go take a shit. Okay. So, he goes into the bathroom, and I don't know. I guess, like I said, we had two needles. So, we're watching Celebrity Rehab and probably finger bang. Finger banging, banging, right? She's like, yeah. Tell me you like it now. And she's like, I love it. Oh, my God. Your fingers are so amazing. Oh my god, I haven't felt like this since 94. I'm like, wait, what? The fuck? Then all of a sudden we're like, where's Trent? Look over on the table, one of the needles is missing. I'm like, oh my god, not again. Go to the bathroom, it's locked. Trent! Trent, man! Open the door! Nothing. Kick the door down. This motherfucker is sitting on the toilet. And he was shitting... Yeah, pulled one of those. Now, now, I'm not above it. I've done it. I've jerked off while shitting. I've done that a bunch of times, especially if I'm on meth. And like my homeboy's like 86 me from bathrooms. There's like a sign that says Ryan can't use this bathroom because I'm such a beat off guy. And all the shampoo, shampoo bottles smell like shit. But uh, this guy's in the middle of taking a shit. And he's got a needle sticking in his arm and he's folded over and he's gray and blue. Motherfucker. He went out. Oh, God. I think I just got the hiccup. No. <sighs> that sucks. Uh. All right, I'll try to finish the story. Ah. <coughs> uh. Oh, that's what happens when you try to inject nicotine in so many different ways. So I go up to him, I'm like, I'm like Trent! <clears throat> I'm shaking him, right? I pull him off the to toilet. He's already cold. He's already losing body temperature, which is a bad sign. I listen to his breathing. He's still breathing, but it's very, very shallow. When I take him off the toilet, It stinks. It smells like a porta potty. There's just literally a piece of shit hanging up out of his butthole. 
I'm just like, oh, oh man. <clears throat> you know, I, you know, it kind of pinches off and goes in the toilet. So I, he, this guy's tall too. He's like over six foot. I'm five, six. Megan's probably like five, one, five, nine, five, two. She's very short. And I kind of drag his poopy butt out of the bathroom. I'm like, go get ice. And Megan's like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to leave. And I'm like, all right, dude, I'll go. And I'm going to leave. And she's like, don't leave the body. And I'm like, oh my God. And I said, well, then you go get ice or I go get ice. The dude's going to fucking die. She's like, I don't want to be alone with him. Please. I'm like, what do you think he's going to do? Motherfucker's like dead. Ugh. Sorry about that. That was, that was gross. So eventually, Megan is refusing to go get ice, and she's refusing to have me leave the room to go get get ice. So she's like, let's just drag him to the ice machine. Now, the ice machine was probably like six hotel rooms away. That was the distance, right? We were all on this balcony. Now, again, we're in a state... Where if we get caught with somebody that's OD'd, we go, go to fucking prison for it and we get charged with involuntary manslaughter. I think even if someone lives, you get charged. It's like a possession in his dead, in his dead body. Even if they don't find the drugs, they're like, well, he had her heroin in him. So obviously you guys had it too and you gave it to him. <laughs> you get really fucked in states like that. So eventually... We decide on dragging the body, the body to the ice machine, which I say is a stupid idea. Why would we do that? Why would we advertise that this is going, going on? And she's like, do you want him to live or not? I'm like, okay, fine. So we drag his body and take him to the ice machine. Now I start taking out ice. His, I'll never forget this. He's wearing these like plaid boxers and he's wearing these jean shorts and he has, I like, I tug him down, flip it over. No, remember, the guy was shitting before this. So I'm inserting ice cubes, raw dog. I mean, I don't have latex gloves. I'm just sticking ice cubes into his shitty resonated anal spokes. Every time I do it, it melts because the heat of the to toxic resonated poop. And it just starts stinking. This whole smell of, of just rank shit it's just per permeating the little hallway. It's disgusting. And I'm, I'm like, come on, motherfucker. Slapping him, sticking ice cubes up his ass. He's not coming by. This guy with the Yankees hat walks up. He has pock marks all over his face. Probably like 27, right? I'm 20 at the time. Bacon's 22. And he's like, he's like, hey, uh, he's, he's got like a Boston accent, right? He's like, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, hey, is that dude? Uh? Wait, that's not. It's not Boston. He's like, hey, is that guy overdosing on heroin? No, I, is that guy overdosing on heroin? That didn't sound right. Whatever. I have the hiccups. He has a he has like a Boston accent. He goes, hey, is that guy overdosing on heroin right now? And I go, yeah. He's like, oh, man, have you given him CPR? I'm, I'm like, no. Nah. He's like, hey, hold on a second. I, I fucking know CPR. I've fucking done this shit before. Hold on. Get out of the fucking way. I'm like, okay. He dives down. It's like being on the rescue 911 or something. It was fucking amazing. It was like the most impressive life saving shit I've ever seen. He like just like jumped, dropped in on him and started, you know, giving him the CPR and pounding on his chest. And then Trent <laughs> he coughs and he just, he comes back and he's just kind of looking at it. It's like, look like a baby just being born. He kind of just looks around. He sees this guy, Mike. He's like, hey, man, you all right, man? God, we almost lost you, man. And I look at Trent and I fucking slap him. You know, I'm just like, that terrible slapping sound. Ugh. Are you fucking piece of shit, dude? I told you not to do that. We just had Allison die. Why would you fucking do that, dude? Get it, get the fuck away from my hotel room. He's like, oh, and he just like puts his shitty bo boxers back up and he runs away. So this guy looks at me. He's like, hey, uh. God, man, some beat. Did you know that fucking guy or what? And I'm, I'm like, yeah, I knew him. 
I went to rehab with him. Told him not to be doing all that dope in my room. Fucking loser. Mike's like, ah, man, you know what happens, man. Hey, uh, you guys party? And I'm like, well, what, do you, what do you mean? He's like, you guys smoke crack. That's what I mean. And he pulls out a, a cookie, which is like, looks like a cookie. Cookie of crack. It's about 28 grams. My cock got hard. I was like, I mean, yeah, I smoke crack. Megan's like, oh my God, you're so gross. I'm like, bitch, you were just shooting heroin with me. What are you talking about? I was smoking crack grosser than that. He's like, well, I got this whole cookie and uh, <laughs> it ain't gonna smoke itself, huh? Okay. I mean, that's, he's like, hey, my name's Mike Virgin. I was like, I'm Ryan Leone. She's like, I'm Megan the Toolman Taylor. And we'll get into what happens in the next Florida video. Sorry, this was so weird. I got the hiccups and I went outside. It was fucking weird. I smoked a cigarette. I love you guys. I appreciate you. Palabra.